Hello, Raptor seniors. Welcome to the year 21-22, your senior year. I'm Mr. Failer, and I have two co-hosts with me to provide you information about your senior year, Ms. Askins and Ms. Schulze. Here's a list of all your counselors based on your last names. Many of you are aware of, your, of, of who your counselor is, but here's a reminder. Senior year milestones. What should you be focused on? The focus this year for you should be applying to colleges, exploring your post-secondary options, college visits, searching for scholarships, taking the ACT, maybe for a second or third time, turning in your PE waivers if you need to, and finishing any credit recovery you may have to finish up as soon as possible. You should be considering your post high school options for your university, two year college, tech school, military, job, or maybe a gap year. Hi, Senior Raptors. We're going to talk a little bit about academic success and your transcripts, which will be very important as you're filling out those college applications. So first off, a GPA calculation for you. Um, this is the Williamson County Schools uh, GPA calculation. As you guys are familiar with, we weight our honors and AP classes. The HOPE Scholarship GPA is different. You can see there, they do not weight honors and um, AP classes, and even the letter grades is on a different scale than what we have here at Ravenwood. So this is why oftentimes your HOPE Scholarship GPA on your transcript looks a little different. <clears throat> here we have a transcript, and you can see at the top here, we have the cumulative weighted GPA. And so this is the GPA that you will report to all of your colleges. Do not give them the HOPE Scholarship GPA, which as you can see is below there. That is not an unweighted GPA. As you saw previously, it's on its own different scale. And so it's not actually unweighted. And that's why it looks different than your weighted GPA. We actually do not have an unweighted GPA. So if you're asked that, try to leave that blank or put NA for not applicable. Same thing for ranking. We no longer rank students and we haven't for several years now. So we always just put in zero, NA, or leave it blank. Whatever the um, application will allow you to do. Oftentimes with uh, big applications like Common App, you are able just to leave that area blank. Um, and so please just report your weighted GPA to colleges. All right, college applications, lots of questions. And don't forget, we're here for you if you have more specific questions pop up, but we wanted to give you the basics. So for all of you, you're going to be looking at applications. Um, if you're looking at two-year or four-year programs, even if you're deciding to take a gap year, you would need to apply to colleges this year. And so essentially you would be accepted and then you would defer your acceptance for another calendar year. Um, while you're doing your gap year. A lot of colleges have their own applications on their websites, which you can access there. Um, also, many use the Common Application or Coalition. Both of these are um, programs where you can apply to many colleges uh, very easily. Um, and Secondary School Report, um, we also get some requests for that uh, electronically, which we can we can send uh, to your college that way. Deadlines, keep a close eye on this. Sometimes Common App and Coalition are not as clear on this, so it is important to check each individual college website for their deadlines for scholarships. Just put in your college plus scholarships and it should get you right there and you can kind of see when the deadlines are. Sometimes a school will say, hey, you have till January 1st to apply to us. But if you want to be eligible for scholarships, you have to have your application completed by December 1st, for instance. So just keep a close eye on that. Your ACT or SAT scores have to be sent from those websites. 
So if you have not created your own ACT or SAT account on their website, please do so and uh, take care of that. Make sure your scores are loaded into your account so that way you're ready to send those to colleges. You can see here, this is an example of applying to UTK. They have um, a VIP Vol in Progress application on their website, so you can actually apply directly on their website, or you can use the Common application, which also has a link there. Florida State is similar. They do Coalition, Common App, and you can apply on their website. So it's really just whatever works best for you. Many of our students use Common App just because they're able to only fill out that basic information um, once and apply to multiple schools, um, as opposed to having to do all the like, where do you live and your birthday and all that stuff over and over again at each individual website. All right, so if you have a transcript request and it is through a college website directly, so if you are applying directly at UTK, you're going to need to send your transcript to them by going to www.ordertranscript.com. If you type in www.ordertranscript.com, if you go to our school counseling website, it's there. We will send it to you an email a bazillion times for your senior year. You request your transcript electronically. For most colleges, it goes electronically to them, so it's very quick. Some colleges do not accept it electronically, and in those cases, the National Student Clearinghouse will print out and mail a certified copy of your transcript to the college of your choice. If you're applying through Common App or Coalition or send.edu, then we, you put us down as your counselor and we are able to um, send, upload your transcript for you. Recommendation letters. Keep in mind that not every school requires a letter of recommendation um, for teachers or from counselor. Many require um, at least one from a teacher, maybe two. On occasion, I've seen three, but for the most part, you don't need a ton of recommendation letters. I would really reach out to teachers, maybe one, two, um, and ask them if they know you well. It could even be a teacher that's maybe the head of a club that you have some leadership roles in, that sort of thing, um, to get a couple of solid letters of recommendation. And basically those teachers will then submit that recommendation directly to your applications. You do not get to see the recommendation. Same thing for us as counselors. If a school requires a counselor letter of recommendation, then we are happy to write you one. If the school does not require it, we do not typically write them because we've been told by representatives from colleges that if the school doesn't require it, they usually don't read it. And so there's a reason they don't require it. It doesn't really um, play into the factor of you attending or not attending. And so that is why we don't write them for those universities. Um, however, if you see that you do need a letter from your counselor, please complete the student data sheet. Uh, we will send you the link. You'll also get these PowerPoint slides with that active link. Um, and we have some hard copies in the counseling office. So come down, get one, fill that out. Let us really help us get to know you. You know, each of us has a large caseload of students and we just wanna make sure we're really speaking to who you are as a person when we're writing those letters. All right, hello seniors. Uh, my name is Miss Askins. I am one of the new counselors here at Ravenwood this year. And I am going to talk a little bit about the different kinds of applications you are going to see. Um, so the first two are early decision versus early action. Um, early decision is going to be a binding agreement between you and that school, basically stating that I'm going to turn in all of my materials to you early, and then the school in turn will let you know their decision early. Um, you will sometimes sign a contract or an agreement or acknowledgement stating that you will definitely go there if you get accepted, um, and that if you consider their financial aid package to be adequate. Um, these applications and all of your materials will be due earlier than probably the rest of your applications. So you should look for that deadline. It's usually in November, but can be as early as October. So make sure you're looking really at those deadlines and making sure you have everything submitted on time if you're going to apply early decision. Um, 
we should really only apply early decision to one school. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it is binding. So you want to make sure that you're only making that agreement with one school. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the early action, which you can apply to as many schools early action as you would like. Um, this is a non-binding agreement. So again, as many as you like, you're just saying, I'm going to turn in my application materials early. And so the school will hopefully let you know their decision early. Um, you should usually receive a decision sometime in January or February, which is great. Um, you do not have to commit upon receipt of that offer. So you can wait and kind of see how many schools you get accepted to and make a really um, well-informed decision about where you want to go. Um, and you can still apply to other colleges if they don't have early action or early decision. Um, sometimes they will continue on a rolling basis, which just means that you can apply kind of later and they'll let you know as they get your materials and consider them with the other applicants. Um, but yeah, early decision and early action are just basically asking for a faster response. Um, it's just whether or not it's going to be binding or not. Scholarships. We've gotten so many requests for scholarship information, and that is so wonderful because um, every year there's so much unused scholarship money. So we really want to make sure you all are getting all of the scholarships that you are qualified for and you all are definitely well deserving of many scholarships. So we hope to make that happen for you. Um, there are a couple of scholarships kind of sponsored by the state of Tennessee. The first one is the HOPE scholarship. So this is an amount of $3,500 for four-year and two-year institutions with on-campus housing. You must have a minimum of a 21 on the ACT or a 1060 SAT or a final cumulative three 3.0 GPA. We also have the General Assembly Merit Scholarship. So this is up to 1500 supplement to the Tennessee Hope Scholarship. And that's a minimum of a 29 on the ACT, 1330 SAT, and a final cumulative GPA of 3.75. So keep in mind those key, key words of or and and. So the top one is or the ACT, SAT, or the GPA and the bottom one is in addition, you have to get the ACT or SAT and the final GPA. Um, to be eligible for these, you have to fill out the FAFSA, um, which is the free application for federal student aid, which will become available and open online on October 1st. Um, and we will definitely get you more information as we approach that October 1st application opening about the FAFSA and what to do. The TN Promise is up to $4,000 per year of financial aid for a two-year college or tech program. The application for this opens on August 1st, so it's already open, which is great news. And we're going to be doing a lot more with you all in your homerooms this year, um, hopefully getting everyone to apply for the TN Promise just in case two-year or tech program is for you. Um, this can be used at any of Tennessee's 13 community college colleges, 27 colleges of applied technology, or other eligible institutions offering an associate degree program, which is mostly a two-year program. Um, there's no minimum GPA or ACT requirement, which is awesome. You have to submit your FAFSA by February 1st, so that gives you several months to get, get that FAFSA done, and you must attend mandatory meetings and complete your community service to be eligible for this. Um, we do have other general scholarships at the state and national level. Um, a partial list of these is available on our website as we become aware of them and we constantly update the website. So make sure to check it out. You can also email your counselor and we have so many resources for scholarship money. Um, it's hard to even put it all in a website. Uh, but this is a quick glance at our um, scholarship tab on our website. Again, so many resources, information about all the scholarships I touched on and more. Um, so make sure to check it out if you are wanting more information. All right, and one last thing about scholarships now that we've wrapped up our presentation, never pay to submit the FAFSA or a scholarship application. There are some scams out there that will want your money, but this is truly free money. And I tell students all the time to think about it like a job. The more time and effort you put into the application for the scholarship, the more money hopefully you'll get in return. 
Excellent. And don't forget, we, as your school counselors, we're all here to help you. Um, we are happy to answer any individual questions that you have. Please add us to your application so that way we can upload your transcript and letters of recommendation. But also um, keep in a lookout in your email because we will be sending, sending you an email by the end of the week saying, um, let, allowing you to sign up for senior meetings. So senior meetings are when we just carve out some time during your study hall or homeroom to go over the colleges that you're looking at, any, apl any application questions, and just kind of make a plan for you and hopefully alleviate any anxieties that you might have. Um, we can also talk about that letter of rec if that's something you want to do as well. So keep an eye out. Your counselor will reach out to you to say, hey, this is how you schedule with me. And we're looking forward to helping you all as you plan for after high school.